I'm sitting here kind of PMSy and wondering how I'm going to get through the next few months. I don't really have very much personal space right now. And I didn't in California either, but the difference was there that it was mostly really quiet. So I don't think I need space as much as I need quiet. I had a very small space in California, but outside was nature and quiet. And there's quiet here outside too, but my tiny room in California was quiet. But I was in my room here and the TV is going and I really haven't been exposed to TV in like five months. after traffic noise, I think TV noise is something that I really can't stand. So I don't know how I'm going to deal with this TV noise. Today is officially two months off medications and I'm feeling pretty good but right now is the time I warn myself about which is PMS time. So I'm feeling a little bit like, how am I going to get through these next months living in a small room with a TV going on the other side of the wall? And I haven't been exposed to TV in many months. And I'd forgotten how much I dislike hearing it going on and on through the wall. And a lot of it's bad news and... Oof, it's just stuff that I don't want to hear all the time. It really bothers my nervous system. But it seems like I have a little bit of space from that right now. So I'm going to talk to myself. And yeah, two months off meds. Not sure how I'm going to do this next while. I just don't really have open space to just talk to myself whenever I want. Unless I figure something out. A little less conversation, a little more action. All this aggravation ain't satisfactioning me. That's what the lyrics say online. I didn't know satisfactioning was a word. And I don't know if that's what is said in the song, but that's what it says online. Right now, I'm struggling with what action to take. I... Maybe I just want to keep talking to myself, and that's the action I want to take. Which isn't really action, but I don't know what else to do. I feel kind of trapped, and I need to slowly get in tune with a new epigesteratic matrix. My epigesteratic matrix from California is now gone, and I'm feeling it. It was different to just walk outside in nature, and so much quiet, so much darkness, so much beauty. So it's taking some adjusting for sure. And I don't know if I will be able to adjust. I might need to find a way to get my own space sooner than I was planning. And I forgot to include my first grocery shopping video trying to get some healthy food. Whether or not I spend time making that healthy food is another story. So here it is. I went to Costco and got some groceries and this is my attempt to get a little bit healthier. I got some coconut milk because I'm supposed to avoid almonds for a couple of months according to this test thing I did months ago, but I didn't avoid almonds when I was in California, so I'll do it now. I got rice, which isn't part of a ketogenic diet, but it's part of a cost-effective diet. So I'm going to do rice with broccoli and try these two different sauces from Costco. And I got some Laura bars for when I'm out and about, some sour cream for something, and some goat feta to go with the eggs that I got, as well as some bag of protein powder to have with the coconut milk. 
and some spinach. And I also got frozen blueberries and a bit of cottage cheese. So I'm trying to introduce some more ketogenic type foods, but this isn't it 100%. Right now it's just trying to be a bit healthier and seeing how it goes. I also got some of the cold pressed juice. So the main thing right now is trying to stay organized and know what I bought in order to actually eat it. In two of my last three videos, I was talking about Kelly Brogan's article that she wrote, which was an open letter to the spiritual community about psychiatry. And I don't know if I'll ever post those because they're not my words, but, and I could get in trouble copyright wise, even though she has a way to post her content again on one's blog if you put a few little things in there like don't change the content or the images, put the author's name, put the link, and also put this was reprinted with permission from Kelly Brogan, blah blah blah. But I can't really do that in this. So anyways, if I don't post it, read an open letter to the spiritual community about psychiatry on Kelly Brogan MD dot Calm. And she does talk about how it's our responsibility to create some safe space for non-functioning. And I hope to do that at some point. And yesterday I sort of organized some of my insights. I took out some of them that I don't want to talk about. And there weren't that many. But just going through them made me feel a little bit better. It made me feel like, yeah, I do want to talk about this stuff. Because I was questioning that. So I have a ton of insights on my computer and then a ton in my notebooks in really messy writing. So I'm going to do some of them in my computer today because I was definitely lost in the stress of this sort of stressful situation. And I felt like the answer for this stressful situation is creation. Just keep creating. So from situation to creation. And I feel this discontent, this revolt, being back, like having my stuff and what am I back for? What does all this mean? What am I doing? And I had a very small space and just a little bit of my stuff for a very extended period of my time, five months. And I don't even feel like I need that much space, but I do need silence and not to have that TV noise around and things like that. And I did see something I wrote before I left where I took a random way back to my room and then when I did, there was a hummingbird that just hovered in front of me and I realized had I taken the most efficient way back to my room, I wouldn't have had that encounter with the hummingbird. And it reminded me of a quote by Krishnamurti that says, there is an efficiency of love that is much greater than the machinery of thought. I just wanted to add that in there for a happy thought totally off the thread of what I'm going to be talking about likely is I wrote that if we believe that we are mental patients then we feel like nothing needs to change but the chemistry in our brain or that's the main thing that needs to change and a lot of times we'll sit around and wait for meds to kick in things like that and can we replace this with our call to be responsible to respond to the world to change the world not just change the molecules in our brain and to respond to what's happened to us to what's happening to us and really all this self-dialogue this talking with myself is researching my own brain and talking to myself and talking to myself is the research of my own brain because what comes through my brain depends on me talking to myself so that's part of the research the method is the research and I really don't know and I have no idea. And when I don't know, I find that the universe has lots of ideas. And so I tap into that. And I feel like if we were relating in a dialogical way in daily life, I wouldn't necessarily feel this impulse to write things down and talk about them with myself because I would probably just talk about them with whoever's around or not and not worry about it because there would be the opportunity to talk about something with someone in the moment instead of just talking about them with myself. 
And when I was reading through my insights, I realized that some of them seem really out there, like usual, but maybe a few more steps out there than usual. Likely because now I'm not necessarily referring back to mental health as much. So it seems like the insights I've had are something beyond. It's maybe something like if I was to be in touch with some kind of non-ordinary state of consciousness without thinking that was it was any kind of pathology or had anything to do with that, then I might just say these things and speak as that and not say, well, this is the way I see so-called mental illness. I don't see it that way. I see it this way and that way. This is just talking without so much reference to mental illness. And it seems beyond the me in a way. Some of them seem like instructions to myself or reminders to myself, me talking to myself, but in a different way, almost like coaching myself to the next level in a way. I don't even know what that means. And that's the thing that this is all uncharted territory for me because I haven't been in a space of being off medications yet having access to some of these other memes and insights in a long time. And the last time I was, was quite a few years ago and then I was medicated and it's been a long journey back to this point where I've been clear. So I'm wondering what it will be like to talk about a lot of this now that I'm feeling more clear and will I be even more clear when I talk about these things? And I'm gonna talk about them anyway, even though they're somewhat beyond what I'm experiencing and embodying now because I took a lot of talking to myself about the possibility of being off medications to eventually get there. I talked about it for probably eight or nine or ten months before I started that process. So maybe I need to speak to myself in these ways that seem a little bit outside my comfort zone in order to bring them within my comfort zone and just feel like that's naturally the way I see and I speak. And all of these are from when I was still in California and now I'm back here and I'm finding it difficult to find my voice. I'm not having dialogical conversations like I was with several people that I made friends with there. So that could be partly why I want to start talking to myself in these ways again, because that area of my life is missing and perhaps that will prime new conversations here somehow. I don't know. Or at least keep me in that space until such time as I'm able to interact with others in these ways. So I will keep speaking in terms of new possibilities and even if they don't seem like me, I don't even know what me is really. Self-dialogue is see willing possibilities and sight saying and see saying, just seeing things and saying it. And I'm also say willing possibilities. So by saying things, that's willing different possibilities than if I was to just ruminate in situational awareness or ego consciousness. Can I sway the way by saying it my own way? And this might be something I have to do in order to stay ahead of the gravity of the situation, feeling a bit trapped, feeling like I need to adapt, feeling like I can't just go back to peer support to make some money and help in ways that really bother my nervous system. If I had money right now, I'd probably just find a place on my own. So that seems to be one of the barriers. Some of what I say are you statements, but really I'm talking to myself. For example, I wrote down, you must talk yourself into your dreams, into your creation. When I say you, I'm talking to myself, reminding myself that's all I'm doing. 
It's speaking as the possible self and not the ego self or just the ego self. It's the I don't know self. Say I don't know and it naturally negates the self because it's the self which thinks it knows. I think, therefore I think I know. And I want to make a prediction, an educated guess, now that my nervous system is being re-educated without all the toxic medications coursing through it. And I'm going to predict that I won't be taking meds still by Christmas time. I realize that I talk to myself also because it's not safe to be a former mental patient or psychiatric survivor out speaking like this. And at the same time, talking like this is what has made me into a former mental patient and a psychiatric survivor. So I can't stop. And there's definitely an intensity with wanting to talk to myself on video for some reason. It seems to even get in the way of wanting to just hang out and be in so-called normal relationships. And I don't know what that is. It just feels like some kind of work that I have to do and just keep working at it, even though I don't know what the point of it is. Maybe before I thought the point was to talk myself out of the mental health system, but now I've done that, so I'm just going to keep going and see what happens. And this will probably be a bit choppy, but I'm thinking that it'll get more smooth as I get back into it. I haven't really done this in this way in several weeks. And a lot of things I say are hypotheses that I'll never have time to test. Maybe certain ones I'll want to test, but I like to just have hypothesize. Eyes that make hypotheses and wonder. Not knowing, but wondering. And I remember before I wrote down this big batch of insights, I sort of invited that other voice to come in and share these insights through me. And I got a huge download, and there's so many of them. I felt like this voice of Gaia knows that I was close to ending talking to myself about mental illness. And to me, the mental illness is the me. And I wonder if Gaia can scare me anymore, because if there's no me to scare, then how will that happen? And when I wrote that, it seems like there was some fear happening or something, because I also wrote that Now it's obvious that this energy is trying to help. It might feel like it's trying to harm the me because it's the me that is in the way of this communication. Don't believe. The point is we have our own capability to make our own narratives based on our own understanding. And these must be fluid and change. There's no problem with any narrative in particular. It's the non-fluidity. It's identifying with the narrative and attaching to it that is the problem. For example, I can make up a story and I know it's a story and that's a certain narrative. But then if I decided that was a true story, then there would be a problem there. And that could be part of the mechanism of map consciousness of so-called Mania and psychosis is that all these stories get made up, but then we identify with them, we believe them, and that makes them a problem. It's almost like believing our own imagination, and there's something in that process. It's almost perhaps that there is no real me or identifier, so everything feels like me. All of the stories feel true because there's no me, which is the mechanism that says good, bad, true, false, yes, no, that has been suspended. So everything feels true. Just like in a dream, everything feels like it's real and happening. So we can make up stories, we can speak as personal narrative, and beyond that is human understanding and also understanding of Gaia and the cosmos. And we can speak as those narratives as well. Some of these are kind of random 
The light in our eyes creates creativity and also meets the light in the eyes of others. The light in our eye helps us create. It is what we co-create with, with the light of the universe. So the light in our eyes is part of our creativity and we co-create with the light of the universe, which is what we see. And we don't have to believe in the placebo effect in order for it to work. So it's not necessarily about belief. It's actually part of the design of the nervous system. But then we make it into a concept called belief, but it's actually part of the nervous system. It's not something you believe in. And they say the placebo effect is believing that something will help. But the placebo effect itself isn't a belief. It's an actual fact. So making it about belief, I feel it's more about understanding how things actually work. And to say that medications are the be all end all or material things and then call the other, which is the natural mechanism, a placebo effect, is downgrading it in a way. It's actually the design of the nervous system. It's not an effect of nothing. One could almost think that material medications and things like that get in the way. Maybe the placebo effect or the natural healing works a lot more if it wasn't actually distorted by our belief in material healing. So it's hard to say. It's a misunderstanding. And I was reading something yesterday and I learned that Dick Price, who was one of the founders of Esalen in Big Sur, California, was in the psych ward for three months. And he thought it was a transformative experience, not a mental illness. And he went on to be one of the founders of Esalen, which is one of the big learning centers of the human potential movement. And I feel like probably all of us who go through these transformational crises can be a Dick Price type person when we understand ourselves in the way that he did. So now that I'm done talking myself through the mental health system, I'm free to talk or not to talk. I do still feel impelled to talk, so I will keep talking. And I was feeling like California is symbolic for a state of consciousness, and I was wondering if I'll be able to take that California consciousness back home with me, and I feel like the answer in a way is no. Different environment feels different. And I also made a note to myself to talk about how I want to talk about my trip to people and I've completely failed at that. I haven't said anything powerful. I don't know what to say. I feel more just in shock and just tippy-toeing around and adapting and trying to get used to things and not being able to be like, wow, this was so powerful and transformative. So I wasn't able to do that. And I wrote, how do I want to share my experiences with people when I get home? That has been a big failure. So all is not lost. I'll just keep talking to myself and see what happens.